and shut down. He's going to die without that medication, mm. as he was calling it. Right. Um, you know, she really didn't know what to do. Um, those are individuals that can call on us at our treatment hotline, and we can walk them through the steps of what to do. Exactly. You don't have to suffer in this alone. You're not alone. Please, please use us as a resource. If you call us for treatment, information is never, ever turned over to law enforcement whatsoever. That's against federal law to do that, and we would never do that. You can trust our treatment department. It's a totally separate hotline number. Um, you can talk to the ladies there. They're certified alcohol and drug counselors um, that answer that that hotline and they're more than happy to walk parents or sometimes they even talk to, to kids who are looking for help for their parents. We're more than happy to walk through that with them. Let's give out those numbers while we're thinking about it. If somebody's under the sound of our voice right now and you have an addiction or you know somebody with addiction and you want to see them help, what's some numbers? Um, call our treatment hotline at 866-90-UNITE. Okay. That's 866-90-UNITE. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to leave a, um, a, a, a tip line for law enforcement or you have other questions about Operation Unite, you can call 1-866-OP-UNITE, O-P-UNITE. Okay. Um, or if you don't want to call the toll-free number, you can just call into our main office at 606-677-6179. Let's talk about this. We were talking about the suit of that. Uh, we need stronger restrictions and, and things on these medicines. But what happens when people are honestly hurting themselves just to be able to go to the hospitals and get these pills to resell, doing it on purpose? Mm -hmm. We see that um, quite a bit. And we get a lot of calls from physicians mm -hmm. saying, you know, 30% of the people who were in my office today were seeking drugs. Right. So we started a, a medical advisory council last year after Dr. Dennis Sandlin, oh, I'm sorry, it's two years ago after Dr. Dennis Sandlin in um, Hazard, he was a physician over there, and he was murdered by um, a patient we feel was seeking pain medication. And um, a really sad um, story. Um, so we started a medical advisory council to educate doctors and physicians about addiction because you know every year they have to have continuing education hours and they call it CMEs, continuing medical education. Right. Um, and they have to have so many hours every so many years regarding HIV and AIDS and hepatitis. And we see that we believe that addiction is seen more frequently in our area than those other diseases. So we need them to be educated about addiction. Right. And they need to be able to spot it when they, someone comes into their office or the emergency room or what have you. Um, and we have a lot of doctors that do a really good job at that. Um, but then we have a few that um, it's cash mm -hmm. to them. And, um, you know, they open these unscrupulous cash-only pain clinics, and for $300 you can walk in and get basically any prescription that you want. Mm. We have individuals going to uh, these clinics, well, we have them in Kentucky, but we also have them um, in Florida and Tennessee and Georgia, um, where they come back with hundreds of pain pills at a time. Mm. And um, they have bouncers that work in the parking lots, and, you know, we've seen evidence of individuals being so blown away that they overdose as soon as they leave the clinic and they're making their way back to their home. Uh, we've had them overdose on the interstate. We've had them sit in their office and fall off the chair um, oh. while they were waiting to be seen. So it's a, it's a huge issue and those doctors don't want to be educated. So those doctors need to be put out of business. Right. Um, and I was very proud of uh, Speaker Greg Stumbo of the House in Kentucky. He just called on the Kentucky Board of Licensure mm -hmm. that regulates these doctors. And um, they actually do, uh, are supposed to investigate doctors for overprescribing practices in these pain clinics. And he called on them to step up and do their job. So uh, we're hopeful that some legislation will force them into that. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to the next session that starts in January. We'll need the public support. We've got to get rid of these cash-only pain clinics that are just looking for a way to make a dollar. You know, this is a very intense program today, and I am so thankful for the work that you're doing, Karen. And we need more work. We need to get involved with Unite, with the enforcement, because, you know, drugs is, is so scary and it's such a horror that's going on right in our communities. I've seen little kids that's been exposed to this. I've seen people that's overdosed on this. I've, you know, a lot of times young teenagers will pop a few of these pills and they'll drink on top of it. Mm -hmm. And their life is gone just like that. Mm -hmm. People don't realize how dangerous this is. 
And it only takes one time. It only takes one time. You know, I've talked with youth groups. I've preached to youth groups in churches and in different things. And I've warned them the dangers of drugs. It only takes one time in your life to be over. It does because, again, these drugs are so very powerful and they don't realize that. Um, over and over again, we're told by teenagers and preteens that um, take these drugs that um, it comes from a doctor and they're safe. Mm -hmm. So it's safe. You know, it must be okay because it comes from, you know, a, a physician. Well, if it's not prescribed for you, for a specific um, disease or symptom, then you have no business taking that medication because it's not safe for you. Right. And sharing drugs in front of our kids, it's the wrong approach. You know, you may have a headache and your husband was prescribed something for a backache and you mm -hmm. think it's okay to take that. It's not. Right. And you certainly can't do that in front of your kids. So we ask all the adults, we have a campaign called Accidental Dealer, 